The Dallas Cowboys come to town for Sunday Night Football, and they are smarting after a 28-14 loss to the Tennessee Titans last night. Dak Prescott, it'll be his first ever meaningful game in Philadelphia, and the weapons that he has are quite different than in the past. There's no more Jason Witten at tight end, but he does have a game-breaking receiver in Amari Cooper. The guy's obviously a dynamic player. He's a great route runner. He's got great hands, radius to catch it wherever the ball's thrown at him. He's got the whole route tree. He's explosive. I mean, I, could, I think I could list everything that there is about a wide out. He's got it. So we'll have our hands full there, um, and then we'll see where it goes. But he's obviously a good, good player. He was a comfort uh, blanket for the quarterback. He was a go-to guy. He's so sure-handed, so, such a savvy route runner. Um, that, that threat isn't the same as it was in years past, although they're very capable at tight end. I'm not saying that, but, but again, uh, I don't know. They've got different go-to guys now than a year ago. You know, Cole Beasley is a go-to guy, I think, for him on third down, a guy they feel comfortable, can get open, uh, has great hands, you know, that type of thing. I think they've just kind of spread it out a little bit different than what they did a year or two ago uh, now that Witten's retired. And, uh, but they still have some guys you got to pay attention to. The Eagles have a new wide receiver of their own in Golden Tate, who was acquired at the trade deadline. How quickly can he be incorporated into the offense, and how will he develop chemistry with Carson Wentz? Yeah, I think that's a lot of them spending time together, just communicating, making sure they, they're seeing things the same way, they're on the same page of how they expect things to be run, adjustments versus coverages, and then when we get on the field, the opportunity for them to spend time throwing, communicating after every single route, um, and then when we get back in the film room of communicating again, w whether it's their rep or whether it's a rep another player takes of Golden hearing how Carson expects things to be done, and then also Carson hearing how Golden sees things. Just getting them on the same page is going to be big this week, and that's something we're looking forward to. Well, we've got strengths in our room all over, so uh, you always play to everybody's strength. I, th I think just because uh, people sometimes get labeled or mislabeled, may, may be, you know, receivers are receivers. You put them out there, they're going to catch the ball, whether inside or outside. So uh, maybe you only saw one skill set because that's what they were asked to do. But you know, I, I think everybody in our room, have we're going to play to their strengths, but our guy can be an inside guy or an outside guy. You've seen Alshon do that. You've seen Jordan Matthews do that. You've seen Nelson do that. And you watch the tape and put on watching this guy, same thing. He moves around and just when he catches the ball and does something with it, sometimes just gets labeled as that guy and run and catch because he does it really well. The addition of Tate will hopefully create more explosive plays for an offense that currently ranks 21st in the league in scoring. It's not just something for the offense to be concerned with, the defense has to worry about as well. Teams around the league are averaging an all-time high 24 points per game this season. In fact, two of the Eagles' future opponents, the Rams and the Saints, combined for 80 on Sunday. Great example is uh, Jordan several weeks ago, you know, getting the post ball and getting over the top. Alshon getting over the top, you know, a couple weeks ago on the post ball, the guy had to tackle him or the game, you know, that's a big, that's a big play. So uh, sometimes speed on paper is not necessarily game speed and the ability to whatever you do to, to get open. We've had guys get there. I know Nelly's slashed and gotten when he's been asked to, has done a great job of getting, getting through there. I think eventually this is what's going to get me out of the game just because the game is changing so much. You can't, I mean, it's hard to play good defense anymore. Um, just the physical side of it, the big hits, uh, the illegal contacts and so forth, it's becoming an offensive game. And uh, you really got to be sound in your techniques. You really got to be sound in your schemes to limit what offenses are, gonna, are doing to you. It's hard, it's hard to watch. <laughs> One way to stop offenses is to generate turnovers, which is something the Eagles have not done as frequently in 2018 as in previous seasons. At this point, the Eagles have only seven takeaways. They were fourth in the league last year with 31. How do the Eagles take away the ball more in the final eight games of the season? I think we have left a bunch out there. Um, so sometimes you get some opportunities to make them, you got to make them. So I think we've missed a few of those. Um, and then I think the other thing goes to maybe not just as many opportunities as we had last year. Um, you know, I don't know if there's anything you can do about it. I mean, what you can't do is you can't start as a player in any position, start like, hey, I want to make a play here. 
-hmm. And then, yeah, you, there's, you can't do that. I mean, you got to do your job, and if the play comes to you, then we got to make it. And obviously, we got one there last weekend with Avante on that tackle, and then Malcolm scooping that ball up obviously helped us in the game. Um, so we just got to hopefully we can just keep trending in that direction. But that's about it. From the get-go, from OTAs on, you stress the fact that we want to take the ball away, and that's going to help us be successful as a defense. I don't think you can overdo it because guys start reaching outside of the box and trying to make plays that they shouldn't be trying to make, and then it's going to go against you. You're going to give up big plays. Um, I think it's one of those things, if you keep doing the right things, you keep doing your job, those plays will eventually come to you without having to reach for it. You go through a dry spell and then all of a sudden you have two or three games and all of a sudden you got three or four a game and you say what's different about it? it's nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, you just all of a sudden now a guy when he tackles happens to put a shoulder pad on the ball where before it wasn't happening in the right. first couple of games. So uh, hopefully this last half of the season that'll turn around for us a little bit and we can get some turnovers because that obviously as you guys know, you know, we had the turnover by Avante Maddox in the Jacksonville mm -hmm. game, that gives you a chance to put some points on the board, sometimes change the momentum of the game. Adding back a key part of last year's defensive line in Tim Jernigan certainly wouldn't hurt. Jernigan has been cleared to practice, and the team has three weeks to either activate him or keep him on the reserve non-football injury list for the remainder of the season. Defensive line coach Chris Wilson wouldn't offer a timeline for Jernigan's return, but explained what he's been doing behind the scenes. So I really don't have a, a gauge on a Sunday yet for yet for Timmy. The biggest thing right now is to see how he progresses in practice and uh, to see where he's at before we, we actually get him going. Well, he's really been working with our strength and conditioning staff. He's uh, been great with our medical staff in regards to doing the things that they've asked him to do. And the one thing that I appreciate more than anything, he, he's in shape. And, uh, to me, that's really important. Now that, That'll make this next transition not easier, but it'll be more complimentary for us. Let's check out what we have coming up for you on the menu presented by Amorosos. Our live coverage begins tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. as head coach Doug Peterson and quarterback Carson Wentz will address the media. If you're not able to join us, Amy Campbell will have a complete wrap-up of the day's events on Eagles 360 presented by Xfinity. Until then, I'm Chris McPherson. Everyone, have a great Eagles night.